How's it going, everybody? My name is MDK, WLAN, otherwise known as MDK. Please call me MDK. But today we're going to go over how to install Arch, and I mainly chose this because the Arch community seems like a very big RTFM community. Uh, whenever I have problems, I always seem to have a very hard, pro a hard time trying to get that problem fixed, which it comes with the territory I guess same applies to Gen 2 so it's fairly basic Arch is very very um, I like it mainly because it's install what you want it's an operating system with simplistic values to it which is good because you know you install your button new and it comes with shit that you don't want mainly like I don't I don't care for unity so every you button new install I do I'm always installing like GNOME 2 or KDE or something else besides Unity. So that's the cool thing with Arch. Now this install is not going to include how to set up a window manager or a desktop environment. I'll go over that in another video where I'll probably cover LXDE because LXD is very easy to set up. Not that GNOME 3 or KDE isn't, but uh, but yeah, we'll get to that when we get to that. But for now, um, let's set it all up. So I'm going to do this all in VirtualBox, so Arch64. Let's actually press the right buttons. YouTube. Uh, I'm going to give it 4 gigabytes, and I'm going to give it 30 gigabytes of space. So let's change some settings in there. Uh, let's give it two processors. That's right. Let's turn off floppy. There's no reason to have that. All of the video RAM. 3D acceleration and let's grab the arch tool ISO. So that's all set up. That's pretty straightforward. If, if you guys need help setting up VirtualBox, let me know. I can't imagine, but it's it's fairly simple. So waiting for everything to get there. So this is why a lot of people run screaming from Arch. Ah, it's a command window. Oh no. But it's fairly simple. So, I'm going to use GPT. A lot of other people will probably use MBR. Uh, you can set up an LVM as well. Uh, it's personal preference. Um, I, I have no idea how to set up an LVM, and I really haven't messed with LVM. Um, I know of a very good install guide of setting up an LVM in Gen 2. Um, so I'll throw that down in the description. It is an hour line, long video, but I think that's mainly because it's just fucking Gen 2. But, regardless, so, gdisk, let's spell shit correctly, dev, sda. So, you get this wonderful little window here. So, you want to press N for a new one, because you're setting up a new partition. First one, make sure it's on the last sector line, and we're going to set up a 250 megabyte one. Have it be the default 8300, and we'll set up another new one. We're going to set up four new ones, so... Uh, this is going to be the swap, which is 2 gigabytes, and we have to change it to 8200. So, you can see there that it is swap. Next, which is new, um, let's give this a 10 gigabyte one, and that'll be 8300, and then N, and then just press enter for everything, so we're grabbing all the free space. So, we have our root, boot, home, and swap directories. So, press W to write that, and obviously agree to it. And that's wonderful. So now we want to make our file system types. So make FS uh, extension 4. You can use extension 2, 3. Doesn't really matter. Uh, dev SDA. Yeah, dev SDA. Brain work. Uh, everything except 2. So dev SDA 1, 3, and 4. And then dev SDA 2 is going to be a swap. So make swap dev sda2 and then we want to swap on swap on dev sda2 okay so now that's all set up our swaps turned on now we want to mount everything so mount uh, dev sda3 I apologize for background noise if you guys hear that so dev sda3 is going to be our mounting uh, change into mount so cd mount and now we want to uh, make two directories. Make directory boot, boot, and home. 
and then we want to mount them accordingly. So let's do uh, mount dev SDA1 as our boot and SDA4 as our home. So that's all wonderful. So now we want to do the basic, you know, install of everything. You can change that amount. It doesn't really matter. Um, so we're getting the base and the base develop, which is uh, the AUR packages and all that wonderful stuff. So pack strap, pack strap, um, tech mount. I, I guess we really didn't need to change it out of the base, base develop. And this is going to take a little bit, um, it's 151 megabytes, um, for me it's going to take a while because I have a DSL connection and it's slow as dicks. But if you have like cable, or if you're very lucky to have a Fios connection, <laughs> this will take about 5 seconds for you, but for me it's going to take a little bit, so I'll continue recording once this is all done. Boy, that was long enough for my background to change. Go figure. Anyway, now that that's installed... We can, um, well, we can grab one more thing from our pack strap so then we don't have to come back. So, uh, pack strap slash mount, um, syslinux. Make sure you grab that. You're going to need it a little bit later. But now that everything, we really don't even need an internet connection after this point. So, yeah. Um, I guess we'll generate our fstab, gen fstab, um, Mount obviously, and we want to do a waka waka as Darren from Hack5 calls it. Um, tech mount or backslash mount uh, Etsy FSAB. And then um, make sure that this is correct. So you want to go to uh, where you just made it. So make sure this is correct. Um, if you just stab, if, if your F stab didn't generate correctly these would be wrong these are correct though but if it didn't generate correctly like obviously if you set up an LVM and you do this it's not going to generate correctly or most of the times I don't think it does generate its naming scheme but anyway make sure that this is a hundred percent correct um, mainly you want to look at these lines here like the I don't have a pointer so uh, the dev SDA 3 the SDA 1 blah 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 make sure they are mounting the right things and etc Okay, um, now we're gonna do ch root stuff. So arch tag ch root um, mount. Now for whatever reason, ch root does not give you a bash shell. It gives you a regular shell. So type bash. Uh, I don't know why it does that. Um, I guess we'll do our locale gen. So uh, nano uh, etsy l o c a l e dot gen and now this is obviously depending on where you live uh, for me I live in America if you couldn't tell from my incredibly thick accent uh, right there so like say you lived in I don't know the UK you would want to find the English version of the UK if you live in Germany you would want to find the German one so yeah uh, and then we want to generate our locale so uh, locale uh, gen will generate all that wonderful stuff. So now, we want to set up a sim link for our time zone. So, ln tag sf, because we want to force the sim link. Uh, user Oh, where am I? User share zone info. Now again, depending on where you live, if you say live in Germany, I guess it would be Deutschland. Anyway, um, it depends on where you are. So, America... Uh, I live on the eastern side, so New York, and we want to copy that. Well, we want to set up the sim link to uh, Etsy local time. Hello, I okay. The sim link set up, and then uh, let's set up our host name, which is a uh, nano host name. Use yeah, whatever. Arch, it's whatever you want it to be. I'm just gonna put arch there. Anyone does care to know? I actually wrote down all this shit, so that's kind of why I'm cutting up here. Because the hell if I can remember all this stuff. I remember a lot of it, but not all of it. 
So now we want to set up our bootloader. Um, it's fairly simple. This is why we installed SysLinux. So uh, change to uh, boot uh, SysLinux. And now we want to copy a bunch of stuff. Now, this is mainly personal discretion. Um, you can... I would highly suggest that you get the menu, obviously, but you don't need to get the hardware test. You don't need to get the reboot power off. But I'm going to grab everything because it's there. Why not? So CP, um, user, lib, syslinux, um, and then menu, and then period. Period copies it to the current directory that you're in, which is the boot syslinux folder. So um, let's grab the hardware test. This is there. Again, make sure that period's there. It's almost like the semicolon in C++. Um, what else? Hardware test reboots. Spell stuff correctly. And power off. Which is a .com. I always thought that was interesting. Anyway, there it's all there. Uh, so, now that that's all copied over, uh, ext linux tech tech install. That period. I was like, why? That's not what's supposed to happen, yeah. So, yeah, the current directory or period is the device dev SD1, which is yay. So now this is you can change out of this. This is incredibly, incredibly important that you do not screw this up. So, again, very important. So we're gonna do DD. DD is a bit for bid copy of something, which is imperative that you do not screw this up. So, dd conv equals no trunk dr block size bs equals 440 uh, count equals 1 um, the input file is user lib syslinux uh, gptmbr dot bin and then our output file is dev SDA. So make sure that you have this correct. No such file directory. This is why you want to type this correctly. Where did I mess up? There we go. Okay, I'm not sure. I I'm assuming I spelled something incorrectly the first time I did that. But... Yeah. It's fine now. That'll be some editing magic. Uh, but yeah, now that that's done, um, exit uh, ch root. So press exit twice or enter exit twice. Uh, so now we want to toggle the BIOS bootable flag, which is sg disk um, dev sda uh, attributes. Now. This is where I'm not 100% sure, equals colon 1 colon set colon 2. That works. I don't know if you need that many freaking colons, but apparently it works. Um, you can issue the same command with the show, and I'll tell you the legacy bias bootable is now toggled. So now everything is done. Everybody else besides me would tell you to unmount everything, but... Or, hey... How about we uh, reboot? It's going to unmount everything and during the reboot, and I should have uh, pulled the disk. There we go. There you got your menu, and hurrah, Arch Linux is installed. But you're not completely done yet because, well, for one, you need to enter a password. So do uh, passwd because you don't have a password. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay. Problem with this is for me, I don't get an internet connection. So that's all wonderful and stuff. Um, well, you can do DHCP CD if you don't get an internet connection. That's how you issue the command. Um, but, yeah, it's wonderful. But if you want to have an internet connection every time you start up without having to issue a damn command, um, 
you need to type this in. So I'm going to reboot here, show you that it doesn't want to work. And then you get this weird graphic glitch, which I think is just associated with uh, VirtualBox and not really so much associated with Arch itself. So, like, if I do this, see, unable to ping. So, um, because systemd is there now, you can just type to uh, system control uh, enable DHCP CD at, and then whatever port you're using. So it could be eth1, eth0. So, now the symlink is set up, and we'll reboot one more time. second yep so you have internet but for whatever reason that comes up all the time when you install a windows manager or a window manager or a desktop environment it doesn't really matter but ping use example.com so there you go i don't know i don't get it either so there you go arch is finally installed apart from the little mess up at the end there with some editing magic i'm sure uh it all went pretty well. So hopefully this was helpful in one way or another. But yeah, have a good one, guys. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions for videos or anything that you guys need help with, please comment or check out the subreddit of Linux for Noobs. I will always advocate that. But all right, sorry there. The editing didn't perhaps didn't capture what I was saying. Uh, if you have any questions uh, please don't hesitate to ask uh, to ask I'll, I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability and if I don't know the answer I'll try to point you in the right direction to find the answer uh, granted some of the some of the problems that you guys have um, I'm not like this magical wizard that knows everything when it comes to Linux so please don't hesitate to ask uh, if I can't help you I will if I can't I'll try to point you where I can apart from that have a good one guys I'll see you for the installation of Windows Manager. See you.